Researchers have long debated how and when the ancestors of Native Americans first arrived in the Americas. In an effort to resolve these questions, scientists looked into the genetic differences between ancient and modern people from Asia and the Americas. Their study found no signs of multiple groups entering the Americas at different times or ongoing mixing between northern Native Americans and Asians. Instead, they discovered that the first people likely moved to the Americas from Siberia around 23,000 years ago. Furthermore, the study suggests that the groups known as Amerindians and Athabascans came from the same ancestors, who later split into two distinct populations about 13,000 years ago. The widely accepted theory on how the Americas were populated suggests that the ancestors of today's Native Americans came from Siberia through the Bering Land Bridge around 14,600 years ago. However, there's ongoing debate about how many times people migrated into the Americas and when these migrations happened, with different studies offering varying interpretations based on physical and genetic evidence. In their study, scientists tackled four key questions about the history of Native Americans during the last Ice Age and afterwards. First, when did Native Americans split off from their ancestors? Second, how many times did people migrate into the Americas? Third, was there a period of about 15,000 years when ancestral Native Americans lived isolated in Beringia, as the Beringian incubation model suggests? Fourth, did groups related to Australo-Melanesians survive in the Americas after the Ice Age, as differences in skull shapes between the oldest, Paleo-American, and more recent Native American remains might indicate? To find answers, the scientists analyzed 31 modern genomes from the Americas, Siberia, and Oceania, 23 ancient genomes from the Americas dating from around 200 to 6,000 years ago, and genetic data from 79 people today representing 28 groups from the Americas and Siberia. They combined this new data with previously published genetic information from around the world, adjusting for recent European mixing with some modern Native American populations. Using three different analytical methods, scientists established that all Native Americans, both Athabascans and Amerindians, diverged from their Siberian ancestors around 20,000 years ago, but not before 23,000 years ago. The separation between the Athabascans, including northern North American Amerindians, and the populations of southern North Americans and those from South and Central America occurred around 13,000 years ago. This timing aligns with the age of the earliest known archaeological sites in the Americas, indicating that the division between these groups likely happened after their ancestors had entered the Americas. The study also revealed that individuals from the Holocene era, the current geological epoch, which started approximately 11,700 years ago, found in the Americas, are genetically similar to current populations in the same regions, showing a continuity of genetic lineage for at least 8,500 years. Additionally, the research suggests there was genetic mixing between Native Americans from both North and South America with groups related to East Asians and Australo-Melanesians. This latter connection might have occurred via an East Asian path that could include ancestors of the modern Aleutian Islanders. Furthermore, by comparing genome data and physical characteristics, morphometrics, the study concluded that historical Native American groups such as the Pericues in Baja California and the Fuego Patagonians at the southern tip of South America were not isolated holdovers from the earliest settlers, the Paleo-Americans. Thus, the evidence does not support a theory of early migrations directly from Australo-Melanesian populations into the Americas. The study sets a maximum time limit of around 23,000 years ago for when ancestral Native Americans started to genetically diverge from their East Asian ancestors. 
This initial divergence was followed by a relatively brief isolation period that lasted no longer than 8,000 years, after which these ancestors entered and spread throughout the Americas. The findings support the idea that all Native Americans came from a single migration wave. After settling in the Americas, there was additional genetic mixing with groups related to East Asians and, to a lesser extent, Australo-Melanesians. This original migration wave split around 13,000 years ago, likely somewhere within the Americas, leading to the formation of the northern and southern branches of today's Native American populations. The question of how and when the Americas were first populated is still debated among scientists. The exact details of how and when these early populations spread, especially claims of an even earlier human presence before the last glacial maximum about 20,000 years ago, remain under discussion due to differing interpretations of archaeological, anatomical and genetic data. A significant portion of the genetic debate revolves around mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosome studies, which can be heavily influenced by genetic drift and sex-specific demographic trends. The individuals for this research were chosen based on their ancestral backgrounds to best represent their populations while minimizing recent admixture with Western Eurasian origins. Additionally, 23 ancient genomes dating from about 200 to 6,000 years ago were sequenced, including those associated with early groups like the Pericuas and Fuego Patagonians. The study investigated the genetic makeup of Native American populations in the context of a global perspective by utilizing admixture, a tool that helps understand the mix of genetic ancestries within populations. This analysis was based on genetic data from 3,053 individuals across 169 different populations, including both modern individuals and ancient ones, like the 4,000-year-old Sakak from Greenland and the 12,600-year-old Anzik I from the Clovis culture in Montana. At a basic level of ancestral populations, four groups, the analysis revealed a unique genetic component shared by all Native Americans, including both Amerindians and Athabascans. When assuming a more complex model of 15 ancestral populations, differences within Native Americans emerged, with Athabascans and Northern Amerindians showing a distinct genetic component. Further, the study employed tree mix to map out how modern Native American populations are genetically related to other global populations. This included the modern Siberian and Native American genomes from this research, excluding the Tsimshian genome due to recent Eurasian mixing, as well as previously published genomes from various regions like Africa, Europe, East Asia, and Siberia, in addition to other American populations. The findings confirmed that Native Americans constitute a single group that later diverged into two main branches, Amerindians and Athabascans, with Paleo-Eskimos and Inuit, forming a separate lineage. The closest Eurasian relatives to Native Americans were found to be the Siberian Yupik and Koryak populations, suggesting a historical return migration of Inuit people back to Siberia. To better understand, when the earliest humans moved into the Americas, researchers used multiple techniques to estimate when Native Americans diverged from East Asians, including Siberians. This task is complex due to ongoing debates about how quickly mutations occur in human DNA, which could impact the accuracy of their estimates. The study utilized two primary methods to analyze modern genome data. DICL 2.0, and an Identity by State, IBS, tract method. Both approaches aimed to calculate when Native Americans, including both Amerindians and Athabascans, genetically split from the Koryak people of Siberia, who are among their closest genetic relatives in East Asia. According to both DICL 2.0 and the IBS method, 
This separation occurred around 20,000 years ago. The research further explored models incorporating gene flow, the exchange of genes between populations, after the initial split between Native Americans and the Koryak. These models showed a better match with the observed data than those assuming no gene flow, indicating that interactions between these groups continued even after their initial divergence. This was supported by data simulations and analysis of genetic similarities and differences using the multiple sequentially Markovian coalescent method, another analytical tool which confirmed the estimates provided by Dykel 2.0. In addition to using these sophisticated methods, the researchers conducted simulations under various complex demographic scenarios to validate their approaches. They also considered how errors in identifying which genetic sequences are inherited together could affect their findings, ensuring their estimates were as reliable as possible. Researchers extended their analysis using the Dykel 2.0 model, which accounts for gene flow between populations after their initial divergence to estimate when Native Americans separated from other East Asian groups, such as the Siberian Nivkh and Han Chinese. They found that both Amerindians and Athabascans diverged from these groups around 23,000 years ago. This consistency across different methods and comparisons with various East Asian populations suggests that Amerindians and Athabascans come from the same ancestral group which split from East Asians around the last glacial maximum, possibly due to the severe climate conditions that led to their isolation and subsequent genetic divergence. Additionally, by incorporating climate data into their genetic models, the researchers supported the theory of a single migration source for all Native Americans. This initial migration, which included Athabascans and the ancient individual Anzic I, but not Greenlandic Inuit or Sakak, likely took a coastal route into the Americas during the late Pleistocene. The models required gene flow between Siberian and Native American populations after their separation to best fit the genetic data. There's also evidence of gene flow between Athabascans and Inuit, indicating complex interactions and admixture among Arctic groups. The analysis suggested that while the initial divergence between Amerindians and their Siberian ancestors, including Athabascans, occurred around 22,000 years ago, gene flow between Athabascans and Siberians ceased around 12,000 years ago, likely due to geographical changes like the flooding of the Bering Land Bridge. Overall, the findings affirm a shared Siberian origin for all Native Americans, challenging theories of early migrations from Europe. The initial isolation of these populations in the Americas is dated no earlier than 23,000 years ago, with further mixing with East Asian groups occurring after this separation. This includes admixture from Malta-related populations into early Americans, enriching the genetic diversity of both Amerindians and Athabascans after their divergence from East Asians. By the time of the Clovis culture around 12,600 years ago, ancestral Native American populations had already split into northern and southern branches. The northern branch included the ancestors of today's Athabascans, and certain northern Amerindian groups like the Chippewyan, Cree, and Ojibwa. The southern branch consisted of Amerindians from southern North America, Central America, and South America. Researchers investigated whether genetic differences between these branches could be explained by later gene flow from East Asian sources, specifically the Inuit. Analysis of genetic data showed evidence of gene flow between the Inuit and Northwest Pacific Coast Amerindians, such as the coastal Chimshian and Nizgawa, who live in regions close to the northern Athabascans. However, this admixture signal was not found among northern Amerindian populations further east, like the Cree, Ojibwa, and Chipewayan, 
indicating that the distinction between the northern and southern branches is not due to later gene flow from East Asia into the northern branch. This finding also helps explain why southern branch Amerindians, such as the Karitiana, are genetically closer to the northern Amerindians located further east than to northwest coast Amerindians and Athabascans. Additionally, the study noted that Holocene individuals from the Americas, including the 8,500-year-old Kennewick man, show close genetic links to modern Native American populations from the same areas, suggesting a genetic continuity in some parts of the Americas over at least the past 8,500 years. This supports the notion that there has been a long-standing, continuous presence of Native American peoples in these regions, further confirmed by findings related to the Kennewick man. When examining genetic links between Athabascans and Inuit, as well as their connection to other Native American groups using D-statistics and SNP chip data that had non-Native ancestry masked, a subtle trend emerged. The Inuit appeared genetically closer to Athabascans than to several Amerindian groups, such as the North American Algonquin and Cree, and the Central and South American Yaqui and Ahuaco. However, this pattern wasn't as clear when comparing the Inuit with other Amerindians like the Brazilian Palikur and Surui. Further analysis revealed that certain American populations, including the Aleutian Islanders, Surui and Athabascans, show a closer genetic affinity to Australo-Melanesians compared to other Native Americans, such as the North American Ojibwa, Cree, Algonquin, and the South American Purepecha, Ahuaco, and Wayu. The Surui, in particular, emerged as one of the Native American populations most closely related to East Asians and Australo-Melanesians, including groups like Papuans and Southeast Asian hunter-gatherers. However, it's important to note that these findings are based on a limited analysis of the available genomic data, especially for the Aleutian Islanders, whose data is significantly affected by European admixture. If these observations hold true, they suggest a faint but notable genetic link between some Native American groups and distant Old World populations, such as Australo-Melanesians and East Asians. This link varies among Native American groups and seems to result from gene flow after the initial settlement of the Americas by Native American ancestors. The mechanism of how this genetic signal from the Old World reached South America is not entirely clear. One hypothesis involves migration along a northern route through the Aleutian Islands, which have historical connections to the Inuit and show genetic ties to East Asians and Oceanians. The peopling of the Aleutian Islands, thought to have begun around 9,000 years ago, involves complex migration and admixture events, possibly including gene flow from populations related to Australo-Melanesians. This complex genetic backdrop might have facilitated the transmission of specific genetic markers to South America. This proposed gene flow, though weak, is corroborated by analyses indicating recent genetic contributions to South Americans from groups related to Northeast Asians like the Koryak, potentially acting as intermediaries in this genetic exchange. The discovery of a subtle Australo-Melanesian genetic signal in the Americas brings attention to the Paleo-American model. This model, based on skull shapes, suggests that two distinct groups of people settled in the Americas at different times. The first group, thought to have arrived from Asia during the late Pleistocene, is linked to both the ancient Paleo-Americans and present-day Australo-Melanesians, hinting at a common ancestry due to similar cranial features. It's theorized that this initial group was largely overtaken by the ancestors of today's Amerindians, who have skull characteristics akin to modern East Asians and are considered to have come from later Mongoloid populations. The existence of Paleo-Americans is mainly inferred from ancient archaeological findings across the Americas and some recent but now extinct populations, 
such as the Pericues and Fuego Patagonians. The Paleo-American hypothesis posits that these groups should genetically resemble Australo-Melanesians more than other Amerindian populations. However, analyses of mitochondrial DNA and Y-chromosome data from skeletons associated with Fuego Patagonians and Paleo-Americans show they share genetic markers with modern Native Americans. While these findings reveal some common maternal and paternal lineages with contemporary Native Americans, the reliance on uniparental markers alone can be insufficient for comprehensive insights into a population's demographic history. Therefore, examining autosomal genomic data, which comes from the non-sex chromosomes and represents the broader genetic background, is crucial. In this study, 17 ancient individuals identified with the now extinct Pericues of Mexico and Fuego Patagonians from Chile and Argentina were sequenced. These groups were selected based on their unique skull features, thought to connect them with Paleo Americans. Additionally, two pre Columbian mummies from northern Mexico were sequenced as morphological controls expected to align with the cranial variation typical of Native Americans. The genetic analysis showed that these ancient individuals are more closely related to other Native American groups rather than to Oceanian populations. This conclusion is supported by various genetic statistics and analyses which did not find significant evidence of gene flow from Oceanians to the Pericues or Fuego Patagonians. These results challenge the Paleo-American model by suggesting that despite distinctive cranial morphologies, the genetic heritage of these ancient populations aligns more closely with that of other Native Americans than with Oceanians. In an effort to explore the Paleo-American model further, which posits that early settlers of the Americas had distinct cranial features linking them to Australo-Melanesians, researchers analyzed craniometric skull measurement data of ancient samples. This analysis aimed to assess the physical traits of these ancient populations in relation to both supposed Paleo-Americans and a broader range of Amerindian and global populations. The findings revealed that the Fuego Patagonians had the closest craniometric resemblance to Arctic populations and those identified as Paleo-Americans. Similarly, female Pericues showed craniometric similarities, primarily with populations from North America, the Arctic, and Northern Japan. Interestingly, an ancient Paleo-American reference group from Lagoa Santa, Brazil, showed closer affinities to Arctic and East Asian populations rather than to Australo-Melanesians, challenging previous studies that suggested a close similarity between Paleo-American and Australo-Melanesian cranial morphologies. In contrast, male Pericues displayed more similarities in skull measurements with African and Australian populations compared to their female counterparts, indicating a complex pattern of phenotypic affinities within and across these ancient groups. These results underscore the complexity of drawing conclusions based on craniometric data alone, as findings can vary significantly depending on the samples examined and the methodologies applied. The morphometric analysis conducted suggests that the ancient samples examined do not support the notion of being remnants of a distinct migration wave separate from other Amerindian populations. This conclusion aligns with genomic data analyses, which also found no evidence to support the hypothesis of an early migration directly from Australo-Melanesian populations into the Americas. Together, these findings challenge the Paleo-American model, suggesting instead that the phenotypic and genetic diversity observed in ancient populations in the Americas is part of the broader continuum of Native American ancestry. This aligns with the theory that human migration to the Americas occurred before the rise of the Clovis culture and reached the southern tip of South America 
by 14,600 years ago. While archaeological sites offer only the youngest dates of human presence in the Americas, the timing of the divergence between East Asians and Native Americans might hint at even older sites yet to be discovered, challenging claims of significantly earlier human occupation before the LGM. The exact location of the initial settlement remains uncertain, but the timing has been clarified, offering insights into the population dynamics during this era. This knowledge has implications for the Beringian incubation model, which suggested a 15,000-year period of isolation for ancestral Native Americans in Beringia during the LGM. Recent genetic evidence, including the discovery of mtDNA haplogroup C, one in places as far-flung as Iceland and ancient northwest Russia, suggests that the period of isolation might have been shorter, around 8,000 years, and its precise location, whether in Siberia or Beringia, is yet to be determined through future studies. Furthermore, this research supports the idea of a single migration event into the Americas, followed by diversification within the continent that led to the emergence of distinct northern and southern Native American groups around 13,000 years ago. This diversification is in line with the genetic patterns observed, such as the distribution of mtDNA haplogroup X and certain Y chromosome C haplotypes, which are found in northern but not in southern populations. The timing of this split correlates with the opening of passable routes through coastal and interior areas into ice-free North America, suggesting that these pathways could have played a crucial role in the spread and eventual isolation of groups that would become the Native Americans. Overall, these findings contribute to a nuanced understanding of the peopling of the Americas, highlighting the complex interplay of genetics, environment, and migration patterns that shaped the early human history of the continent.